It's been a month since my last video. I could tell you it's because I've been busy with work and such, but I've always found a way to fit video making into my schedule. But really, I haven't been doing much besides watching people get adjusted by chiropractors and also go into debt reading Berserk. I can no longer afford food. Oh, yeah. I'm no stranger to doing reviews, but it's been six years since my last game review. So I really didn't know how I was going to go about doing this. So why'd I pick this game? No reason. This was my first time playing the game, so I had no nostalgic ties to it. As a matter of fact, I've only probably played two Sonic games before, so I don't exactly have a warm spot for this franchise. I played it on an emulator because that's free, and also getting the PS2 to work with my capture card is a pain, but mainly because it was free. My money has obviously gone elsewhere. Jokes about my financial choices aside, I thought this was just going to be a game that I'd spend a Sunday afternoon playing and then I'd just do a quick video on it and be done. No. Six days. I spent six days playing this. I had no idea what I was in for. I recorded myself playing instead of streaming because I wanted my time spent with Shadow to be private and intimate. Then I don't need people in chat giving me shit for not being able to play a children's game. Before going into this game, I had this idea of Shadow being this super edgy character, and that's the impression you'd get from the opening cutscene. He's got an MP5. It's pump action for some reason. He's riding a motorcycle, even though he can probably run faster than the thing, but whatever, he looks badass on it. And then once I got into the game a bit, I realized that's not entirely the case with Shadow. Really, he just seems confused and wants answers on why he can't remember anything about his past. Am I saying he's a deep, complex character? No. Shadow the Hedgehog comes off like somebody's self-insert character that just happens to be more badass than the original roster. Up until after beating the game and writing this review, I had no idea this was a sequel to Sonic Heroes, a game that I have not played. So there's probably a whole bunch of lore I'm missing out on, but here's what happens in the story of Shadow the Hedgehog. So there's an alien invasion going on, and you have this alien named Black Doom that sounds like the Shockmaster. Let me show you the ultimate power in the universe. They call me the Shockmaster. You've got him trying to collect all the Chaos Emeralds and take over the Earth. You also have Sonic and friends trying to collect the Chaos Emeralds to stop the alien invasion. Also Eggman's there. I forgot what he was doing, and I really don't care now that I think about it. Oh yeah, and Shadow has no idea what the hell is going on, and keeps having flashbacks about some girl named Maria and some ship called the Ark. Where the story goes from there depends entirely on how you choose to play the game. The game has different paths you can choose to follow. Good, neutral, and bad. Depending on which path you take will change your objective for the level and where you end up after that level. So you can end up playing most of the levels three times to get three different outcomes that'll lead to three separate endings just based off of that one level. You know, I wasn't expecting that much choice from a game about Shadow the Hedgehog. Eat your heart out, Detroit Become Human. Pick up, Lieutenant. Except Detroit Become Human and let you go back to your checkpoints and then choose different paths based off of that one checkpoint. Now, with Shadow the Hedgehog, if you want to choose a different path off of a level you've already played, well guess what? You've got to go all the way back to the beginning. I tried using select mode to see if I could unlock a different level based off of a level I had played by doing a different story path. It would not let me do this. You gotta go right back to the beginning. Also, not to mention, you have to beat every single level if you want to get to the last true level. So that's five different paths you're gonna have to go along and beat every single path. Oh, by the way, at the end of every single path are two different boss battles. So this means you gotta do five different story paths twice. That's a minimum of 10 times you're gonna have to play this game if you wanna get the true ending. You know, I initially wasn't gonna go this deep into this review, but after the week-long journey that playing this game turned into, I feel like I'd be doing myself and you a disservice by not going this deep into it. Deep. Now that I've laid the groundwork for the game out to you, what the story premise is, and how the level progression goes, now I can tell you that when I started playing this game, I didn't know about any of that stuff. So when I went into this completely blind, it was a lot to take in. I was getting confused on why there were so many different enemies and why I was getting told by one character to attack one enemy and ignore the other, while the other character told me to do the exact opposite. And the cherry on top of having the third possible option thrown at me really added to my confusion on what I was supposed to be doing. I was just doing whatever objective happened to pop on screen at the time. Now I'm no stranger to playing a Sonic game, but I was around 10 the last time I played one, so there was a bit of a learning curve.
Oh, okay. Oh, god damn it. He kept running into everything and falling off the map. Add all of that to being confused on what I was supposed to do. So this, of course, gave me a great first impression of the game. Sounds like the Shockmaster. I already hate this. I already hate this. This is the path I ended up taking on my first run of the game. I don't know if it was because of those particular levels or my lack of skill at the time, but I found it to be my least enjoyable run of my playthrough. I'll try and blitz through talking about the individual levels so this doesn't become some hour-long discussion of every part of this game. First level you start off in is Westopolis, and you can choose from there which story path to take. You can choose to either kill all the soldiers, kill all the aliens, or just collect the Chaos Emerald. Now I had no idea at the time about different story paths, so I just ended up doing whatever objective was displayed on the screen at the time. It kept changing every time I would run into Sonic or Black Doom in the level. Top that confusion off with my beginner level of skill, and it was a rough start for me with this level. Are you shitting me? Oh cool. Right from the get-go, I like the introduction of guns in this. Yeah, you can call Shadow edgy for using guns compared to the other characters, but what can I say? They work. Not to mention, every attempt I'd use the dash attack ended up with me falling to my death. After tripping over my feet the whole level, I ended up taking the normal path and collecting the Chaos Emerald. The level afterwards is when the realization that I made a mistake playing this game started to set in. Well, it wasn't a complete rocky start. I was noticing while editing the parts for this particular level that I come off incredibly bitchy on some of the game mechanics, but you'll also notice that I obviously suck at the game. So I'm going to explain now that the way I'm criticizing this game is going based off of my thought process at the time while playing that game. I will even acknowledge that I come back to these other levels and the issues I'm complaining about aren't as present because I actually got better at the game. Now, I'm just telling you this so you don't go to the comments and go, you're only complaining about this shit because you suck at the game. Yes, I did. But me sucking at the game early on will not negate the overall review of the game. Just letting you know. Just expect a bitch fest. That's all. So you end up getting transported to where I imagine Temple Run takes place. I still hadn't gotten a grasp on playing the game yet, so I was still running into everything and falling to my death. What the fuck? But it was made worse in this stage with moving platforms, narrower paths, and having everything around me getting destroyed. Oh, fuck you. Around this point is when I started to notice issues that I had with the game's mechanics. Issues such as the lack of a proper lock-on system when trying to shoot or use dash attacks against enemies. Yes, if you get close enough, you'll automatically aim for them, but a good chunk of the time, the camera will fight against you and you won't see what you're trying to attack. Not to mention, there were a couple of times where the shadow would aim for anything but the enemy, despite them being right by me. This led to me dying a couple of times, which made me feel great about playing the game. Oh, I hate this game so much! I also discovered the two different power meters you have. You fill each one up by defeating certain enemies. If you fill up the red meter, it allows you to use Chaos Blast, which sends out a giant shockwave doing damage to any nearby enemies. Filling up the blue meter allows you to use Chaos Control, which lets you blitz through the level until the meter runs out. It was my favorite ability of the two and helped me out the most when playing. This level really hammered in the one issue I have with Sonic games. They're based around fast movement, yet you have these slippery controls that you have to deal with, not to mention all the stuff to run into. Yes, I know there's supposed to be obstacles, so there's a bit of a challenge, but when you put me in these narrow areas where I'm getting shot at and the environment keeps falling onto me, I can't help but slow down and it kind of kills the momentum. Now, these issues were lessened when I came back and played this level later on while doing a different path, and I had gotten way better at playing. But the underlying issue was still there. Not as severe, but still there. I ended up taking the dark path, so I activated all the gems. I don't know why they're called gems, they look more like orbs. Also, on the last gem you activate, you have to unlock this little jump pad. In order to do that, you have to kill the aliens in the area. But, doing so has Black Doom yell at you for killing the aliens. It's like, dude, what did you want me to do? Throw my shoe at it and turn it on? We're in hell, that's where we're at. It was around this point that I started understanding the different paths that you could take and got less confused about the whole thing. Oh, I get it. Though I wish I knew at the time that you could manually change your objective in the pause menu. Oh yeah, there's also cutscenes in between the levels. There's this military guy who doesn't like Shadow for some reason, and then there's the president trying to deal with the alien invasion. Oh god, it's Nixon. 
I don't know why Eggman has a spooky Halloween themed castle, but whatever, I like the look of the level. I didn't like the openness of it all. Since you have three different objectives you can choose from, you end up exploring different parts of the level to complete them. There's also these checkpoints that you can warp between that makes going back if you miss something a lot easier. This level introduces these little dragon things you can ride on and fly through sections of the level. It had inverted controls by default, which really didn't bug me. The controls came off pretty slippery, especially whenever you would speed up. I found myself running into walls and other obstacles a lot in the flying sections, but I would end up slowing down, which made the whole process take a lot longer than I'd like it to. Probably not even the game's fault. I don't exactly have the highest track record for being able to fly in video games. Guys, okay, look, spinning. here's the fighter. You spawned one. Okay. Guys. You grab the <laughs> No, watch. He's just gonna blow up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, grab the stick. <laughs> Grab the stick, Evan! What? Now forward! What are you doing wrong? This level also introduces another mechanic that probably took me the longest to get the hang of, and that was the wall running, or triangle jump mechanic. It's pretty simple, just jump from one wall to the next. But I found myself not making contact with the wall a bunch and just falling. Or there would be times when I'd make contact with the wall, but once I'd jump to the other wall, Shadow just wouldn't commit to the jump and I'd fall. There's no doubt that me being an idiot had to do with how long it took me to get the hang of it, but it also doesn't tell you until a completely different level way later that you can only wall run for like two seconds before you fall. The level also introduces this weird space goop that I guess Shadow can travel through. That's disgusting, but kind of cool. I have nothing against it. I'm just glad that characters would call out that if I needed to dash through it whenever it popped up because I ended up not seeing it a lot throughout the game, even though it was right next to me half of the time. I also learned the hard way that you can change directions while sliding on a rail. What the fuck?! I ended up taking the normal path because I was too lazy to explore the rest of the map. Also, what was Cheese doing inside the wall? Like, he wasn't hiding behind a wall. No, he was inside a solid slab of wall. What? After this came my first boss battle against Dr. Eggman. It wasn't too bad. Just dodge his attacks and just shoot him. Nice and simple. Like that, you piece of shit! God damn it! This level. This level right here. This is the one that made me question playing this game the most. So you're trying to escape this spaceship called the Ark with this girl named Maria, who for some reason moves just as fast as Shadow. Oh god, why is she so fast? The ship is made up of multiple levels, and everything looks exactly the same. At least to me it does, because I have the worst sense of direction in video games. Mario wants you to heal injured people around the ship by throwing these pods at them. Meanwhile, soldiers around the ship keep trying to kill you. So your other option is to defeat them all. All 60 of them. And you bet your ass they're scattered in every nook and cranny of this vessel. Keep in mind, I didn't know yet about switching objectives, so that's the one I thought I had to play. I had no idea where I was going, and the whole thing was miserable for me. Yes, I know there were maps on the wall, but really, all I saw were a bunch of blurry JPEGs that didn't do much help. One cool thing I did find out though was that if you throw a healing pot at one of the soldiers after beating them, they'll stand back up and salute you. That's a nice change of heart. I mean, I still hit them afterwards, but it was a nice feature. Luckily, I found the normal ending before I found all 60 of the soldiers, so that probably saved me another 20 minutes. By that point though, all of the soul was sucked out of me. I don't want to play this anymore. After that, you end up fighting another boss. This one was a little trickier than Eggman, but nothing to sweat over. Just don't touch the floor when it does its ground attack, and just use the weapons you knock off of it against it. Thank Christ. Okay, so far, boss battles are not ridiculous. They're doable. I wasn't a big fan of this mission either. Your objectives were to either destroy the president's jet, kill all the aliens, or just find the Chaos Emerald. Still not knowing how to switch objectives, I tried blowing up the jet first. Then I ran into Tails and got told that I had to go kill all of the aliens. By this point, I just got sick and tired of being told what to do by either side, and just ran for the end of the level. Luckily, that's where the Chaos Emerald was. This level introduces a jeep you can drive in, and whatever, I guess. I mean, you can run stuff over in it. It also introduces a little mech you can pilot with a turret mounted on it. It was kind of slow, but it was pretty handy with killing enemies. Hi. Oh, does that not count because he's just technically not in range, so he's just invincible? That's that's good to know. Thanks for letting Thanks for having that be a fucking mechanic game. Now we're in space aboard the Black Comet, which I guess is the alien ship or something. Well, the floor is death, so you have to ride on these bay blades. This wouldn't be that bad if the jumping wasn't so weak on him. I didn't even know you could double jump on him because the game didn't tell me until I wrote another one two entire playthroughs later. 
Yeah, fuck you, Knuckles. Luckily, you can hop off of them whenever you don't need them and just run through the other sections. They do have a health bar, and you better not be over the space scoop when it runs out. Now I want to address an issue with the game that bugged me the most while playing. I had complained about it plenty of times leading up to this level, but it finally boiled over by the time I got to this point. So you have three paths you can choose, right? Good, normal, and dark. If you take the good path, that means you're technically assisting the soldiers. And if you take the dark path, that means you're assisting the aliens. If you take the normal path, they can both fuck off. Here's my gripe. If I'm taking the dark path and helping the aliens out, that means the aliens should be helping me out. But no. It doesn't matter what side you're playing for in a level, because all enemies will attack you regardless of your allegiance. Yet you constantly get yelled at for attacking them because they're on your side. It makes no sense in the logic of the story, or the game for that matter. Like that part earlier where I had to kill those aliens to complete an objective that was for the aliens. I can understand why it happens with the soldiers, because it gets explained that they're ordered to attack you regardless of whose side you're on, because Captain Cranky over here has beef with Shadow over something. Still doesn't make it any less annoying whenever you get yelled at by an ally for just defending yourself. If they're so good, why are they fucking shooting us? Well, after dealing with all that, I took the hero path and got another Chaos Emerald. E for Evan sucks at this fucking game. <laughs> Another fight with Eggman ensues after all this. This time he's controlling some weird slot machine robot that you have to hit before it gets three slots in a row. If it gets three in a row, that's the attack Eggman uses against you. But if you hit it three times in a row, the attack gets used against him. The logic in this is absolutely flawless and makes complete sense from a design standpoint. Yeah, I'd like my enemy to be able to use my own attacks against me. This battle right here has the best example of how weird the dash attack can be. A good chunk of the time leading up to this, my dash attack wouldn't lock onto an enemy that was right nearby me. Yet here I guess Shadow unlocked the commando perk, because he's basically flying with his dash attack that can track Eggman for a good distance without running out. I'm not complaining about it here because it makes the fight way easier, but still compared to the rest of the game, well that's just bogus. Also I just want to show this clip of Knuckles being an asshole and getting me killed. After beating Eggman again, Shadow gets the last of the Chaos Emeralds. Eggman says, your mom gay, and then Shadow says, no you, and then the game ends. What? Okay, that was my first run at the game. I had no idea what the hell I was doing, and it was probably not the best path for me to take. By the time I got done with it, I thought that I just straight up hated the game. But I wasn't going to just quit on it. There was most likely more to it that I just hadn't seen yet. Also, I'll give the creators huge props for naming every possible path you can take through the game. There's 326 different paths you can take to beat the game. So yeah, good job to whoever's job it was to name all of them. I hate this stupid fucking game so goddamn much. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I never want to play this piece of shit ever again. I immediately went into the second playthrough with a much more optimistic attitude. I was thinking that I had just happened to pick the worst path right from the start, and that the rest of the game would be a lot better from that point on. So I decided to pick the all-hero path, or as the wiki calls it, a missive from 50 years ago. Look, some guy came up with all these story names. I'm going to acknowledge it a bit. Props to that guy. Also, to make this go by quicker on levels I already played in a previous path, I'll just try and sum up to just what I did differently to beat him that time. As I said earlier, you always start at Westopolis. Since I'm doing the hero path, all I have to do is just beat all the aliens with Sonic. And it wasn't too bad since I'd gotten the hang of the controls by that point. I just had a minor issue with finding all the aliens since I ran past a couple on the mission and had to backtrack once or twice. Oh my god, I love it better already. Shadow and Sonic have to stop an alien tank before it reaches the end of the stage. I don't know why it's called a tank, just call it a ship. Are you fucking kidding me? It's actually a nice fast-paced mission, except for these things scattered all over the road. You'll be trying to catch up to the ship, and then there's a blockade of them. The ship itself can take a lot of abuse, so what I did was just collect a lot of ammo for the same gun throughout the level, and then just unload on it near the end. It's not that bad of a level, though it is annoying when you're trying to shoot at the ship, and it decides to prioritize a different enemy nearby, and you waste ammo. And once again, these things do fuck these things. The level wraps up with a boss battle against the fire-breathing diabetic space manatee Black Bull. Not that good of a boss battle. You just keep dash attacking his eye. I beat him pretty quick by using chaos control to slow down time and just shooting him a bunch. Well, I just I, 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 Yeah, you son of a bitch.
damn fourth chaos emerald. Damn, he said damn. That means he's fucking cool. Not only does he own a Halloween castle, Eggman also owns a circus. I'd love to see the meetings he has with his contractor. The hero objective for this mission is pretty simple. Just collect 400 rings. There's plenty of opportunities to collect them as you go across the park. There's flaming hoops you can jump through, turret sections where you shoot balloons, and other circus-themed things like trying to hit the bell hard enough. Not that bad of a level. A little obnoxious trying not to get hit by enemies or touch the flaming hoops. You don't want to lose those rings. I don't know why Tails needed 400 rings, though. Maybe he had to pay off his gambling debts. Or maybe fix that plane he's always crashing. Every time I see Tails in that stupid plane, he always crashes it. This game. I don't know how to feel about this. He went from being completely fucking stupid to... Alright, there might be something there. You end up in a jungle and... Wait, is that a bat? Why does it have boobs? Hey, did you guys know that bats have nipples under their armpits? They've even found an extra set on some bats. But they don't know what they do. Mystery nipples. No, it's because of my freakishly long hedgehog dick. Anyway, Sonic and Nipple, the fem fighting bat, clear all the aliens out of the jungle. It's not a hard level, but remember, I'm bad at finding stuff in games. So it took me longer than it should have. <laughs> Just find more of these pieces of shit. Oh, hey, look, our favorite space diabetic is back. And he's just as disappointing as last time. I'm already expecting it last level of the game. The ultimate enemy, Black Bull. I'm just gonna shoot him in the eye. Maybe they should get him like some safety glasses. He might be good. Great, we're back on the Ark. I was hoping I wouldn't have to deal with that again. Well, this time you have to kill- Wait, wait, hang on. I recognize that. Where have I seen you before? Well, that unlocked a part of my brain I didn't know I had. Guess I'll have to look into that one again. You wander around the arc and kill these artificial chaos. There's a couple of turret sections you have to deal with, but at least you can speed up the turret, or just get off it and shoot with whatever weapon you have if you miss one. Still not a fan of these arc missions. Just like the last one, this one took me a while to complete. There he is. There you are, you blue son of a bitch. Come here. Oh, Shadow, thank you. Yeah, I just I want to be done now. You get on board the Black Comet like you do in the previous story path, but thankfully this time there's no purple goop all over the floor. Shadow and Sonic have to race to the end of the level to reach Black Doom. Along the way, you have to deal with all kinds of aliens. The ones with the laser rifles that can teleport are probably the most annoying. And the really big ones with the swords. Oh, they respawn? Are you shitting me? Like, look, watch. Run away, come back. That's cheap. That is so cheap. Luckily, you're given plenty of weapons to deal with them in this mission. The most interesting one is this vacuum that you can use to pull giant platforms into position with. Or you can just use chaos control like I did and just get past all of that stuff. This mission took me longer than it should have because I ended up screwing myself over. If you're playing the mission on dark mode, you're supposed to flip these five switches to open up a new path. If you're playing in hero mode, you're not supposed to touch any of them at all. Being the pinnacle of intelligence that I am, I tripped one of them early in the level and ended up blocking the end path. Took me a good while to figure out why this force field was blocking my way. Other than that mistake, this level wasn't that bad. Now it's time to score off with the space alien himself with the fruity pebble necklace. Mr. Black Doom himself. Yeah, he's a total pushover. You shoot him a couple times and then just wait for him to phase out of his ghost form and just shoot him again. He makes clones of himself, but really you should be fine if you just keep moving. Also, don't use chaos control like I did to try and cheese the fight because he always ends up in ghost form when you use it and you can't do any damage to him. This is not over. Did I... Was that it? <laughs> that was it? It's the only one I got a rank A on. Huh, well that went better than the first playthrough. I don't know if it was because the levels were better, or just because I had gotten better at playing the game by that point. But it was definitely more enjoyable than the previous playthrough. Oh yeah, you'll notice that I'm just talking about the levels and not the story that's going on in between the levels. I'm saving that for after I beat all the levels, that way it's just easier for me to talk about. Not to mention, with there being like a true ending to the game, does the story really matter to a good chunk of these levels? I don't know, I'll try and put something together later. Overall, a better experience than the last time. But there's still plenty of problems with the game though. It's the second day, and I decided in the fashion of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy for the third one that I was going to be a bad boy. That's right, I was going to embrace all the edginess that Shadow could give me. That's right, we're doing the all-dark path. This time, we're killing soldiers instead of aliens. Yeah, I know that they're technically called gun, but I'm just going to keep calling them soldiers. Though you have to eliminate 35 soldiers, that should be easy. It's my third run of the game, and by this point... I know this game like the back of my penis. But this time took me the longest. 
I eliminated 34 of them, and I just couldn't find the last guy. I ended up going back to the beginning of the level twice, and I still couldn't find him. On my third pass through, that's when I saw him. That bitch. That lazy, sitting, white devil. I hate him. He was right there. You son of a bitch, I thought you were dead. He's unstoppable. I saw him go that way. Well, we're inside the internet now. Wait, how did we get into the internet? Did I plug an ethernet cable up my butt? Glad to see that in the internet, I'm just as bad at digital platforming as I am real world platforming. Oh, fuck me and call me Shirley. I also noticed an issue with trying to use dash attack on the drones. Like your lock on with the drones is weird. And by weird, I mean non-existent because they're slightly above your altitude. Also, the bat chick got in here somehow. I don't even want to know where you plug the ethernet cable. I like the look of this level a lot. All the purples, greens, and blues blended together very nicely. Especially when you're dashing across the grid. I guess for some reason in cyberspace, light just pulls you towards it. I don't know, I won't question it. Not too many complaints about this level, except for these stupid green tiles that pop up and block your path. Especially when you don't have a gun. These things are annoying. No! That and those cyber drones that split into smaller versions when you attack them. Also, I accidentally did the hero mission instead of the dark mission and had to start over. I will say that the hero mission was easier than the dark mission. We're back at Eggman's spooky castle getaway adventure land. This time, we're doing the daunting task of lighting five lanterns. It took me a bit to find all of them. Plus, having Eggman constantly yelling at me for destroying his robots didn't help. But, like I said here... And tell your robots to fuck off! After that, you gotta fight Eggman again. I don't know why, since I spent all level helping him. Also, it's the exact same battle as before. Oh, look at me and my squad that's gonna attack me the moment the mission starts. Okay, remember when I said that first arc mission was my least favorite? I mean, it still is, I hate that mission. But this one, this is the one that really upset me the most. I blew my lid playing this level. Why? Because of that piece of shit right there. That right there is a guarantee to turn the calmest individual into an animal foaming at the mouth. You gotta go around the city and activate five of these city annihilator bombs while dealing with all the crap the level throws at you. This is the level where every little thing that irritated me about the game came full circle. The camera, the lack of a lock-on, and especially your ally shooting at you. They were literally just helping me in the goddamn fucking... Cutscene, are you shitting me? I was definitely on edge this level. <laughs> Shut up! It also didn't help that I kept coming back to a save state where I had a short gap of time to get the last bomb. Not here. Fucking hate this stupid goddamn time mission bullshit. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck this game. I might have also said some mean things. Oh yeah, I could just play this piece of shit game designed for fucking five-year-old closeted furries. No reason why anyone likes these dumbass fucking characters anyways. So yeah, that level put me in a bitter mood, and it's not going to be the last level to do so either. But that comes way later. <laughs> This guy has Fruity Pebbles glued to his shirt. Oh god, no, we're back on the Ark. No, wait. We're in space. Oh no, we're on the dragon. So you just fly through the level and destroy five green space crystals. I guess they're the Ark's defenses. I don't see the connection, but whatever. You know what? This whole mission is whatever. But, hey. Well, at least it's not timed. But then again. There's also a gun in my closet. I could use that to shoot myself. That's probably a quicker alternative than playing this piece of shit. After that mess, you end up fighting this guy again. But this time, he's airborne. But the methods to defeat him are pretty much the same. Just dash attack and shoot him with his own weapons that fall off. By this point, the thrill of being a bad boy had long worn off. So are we on the last level yet? Being evil sucks. Also, this cutscene. Yeah, that sums it up. I could really feel the rage of his character there. Earlier I said I wasn't showing many in-between level cutscenes. Well, this clip right here sums up why. Like, I think the more different story paths I choose, that the more it'll explain no, it just makes me ask more questions. 
Evil Path automatically gets like a 20 point bonus just because I don't have to do that stupid Maria mission. So you end up storming Gun's Fortress and you have to destroy three cores. Not too tough. Just run and gun your way through the mission. It's a mile ahead of the previous two missions. Also, the parts of seeing from an enemy turret's perspective were a little neat. But then... I'll destroy you too. Oh, two guys at once. That's hot. This is probably my least favorite boss battle in the game so far. And here's why. So you have Sonic, and then you got this dude. Now he's got this shield over him, so you can't damage him until it goes down. So how do you think you make it go down? You have to wait for Sonic to jump into the air and attack him. That's what makes the shield go down. What kind of logic is that? How does that work? How the fuck does that work? What is the logic in that? That aside, having Sonic constantly coming after you can be a pain in the ass, especially when you don't have your focus on him. Sonic's easy to deal with, just dash attack him. It's whenever you're trying to do other stuff like grab rings or find a weapon that he becomes annoying. God damn it. Your supply of weapons in this mission is way lower than it should be. I don't know if it was just my session or what, but weapons would not respawn and I'd have to deal with the robot by just using dash attacks. Of course, this hardly does any damage on him and he always puts his shield back up. So now you have to wait for Sonic to get close enough and jump in the air for you to dash attack him. But be sure you're close enough to the robot so that you can switch over to him midair and dash attack him before he puts his shield back up. Not to mention he has this shockwave attack, so be sure to get away before he uses that. Do this on repeat for a good while, and you'll eventually beat him. This boss battle is a drag to play, and I did not like it at all. Did you see that? Did you see how Sonic just dashed from halfway across the map? After beating Sonic and the robot, Shadow gets all the chaos and rolls and claims he's got drip or something. And that's it. <laughs> I just realized none of them have penises. I don't know why... I don't know why that's what I all I could think of. Okay, so not a fan of the dark story path, or as it's called, Punishment, Thy Name Is Ruin, or like, Thy Game Is Ruin, fucking high fuck. I think by this point, playing the game was starting to take its toll on me. I got home from work that day and booted up the game to play. I then immediately fell asleep at my desk for three hours. Now, you could excuse this as me being tired from work. But what I think happened was my body saw the title screen and then immediately went into fight or flight mode and made me fall asleep so I wouldn't have to play the game anymore and hurt myself any further. That was only a temporary solution though, because as soon as I woke up, I started playing the game again. I mean, I got up and did some other stuff first, like feed the dog, shower, and watch cartoons. I think I just kept trying to find ways to prevent myself from playing that day, but eventually I got around to playing. This time we're just gonna go straight down the middle. Take the normal path, or as the game calls it, a new empire's beginning. I'm I'm sorry, someone just had to sit down and name all of this shit. You, you wanna know what I call this run? The secret Joestar technique. Just run to the end. Just run to the end. Oh, oh, I love this level now. No, I'm just kidding. I love this run. This is my this is my favorite run, the neutral run, because literally you just run through it. Skip all the bullshit. Just run to the end. Also, this bee's annoying as shit. Who the fuck is that? Just run to the end. Just run to the end. Until you have this dumbass fight with Eggman. This time he's on a platform and you can't get to him. Must have taken notes from Rise. One of the only weapons you have are these rocket launchers that you have to manually aim with. But don't stand still for too long or you'll just get blasted by everything in the level, like these sonic androids that have rocket boots. Wait, I want rocket boots? Why don't I have rocket boots? I'd fly up there and flick his nipples if I had rocket boots. I mean, yeah, there's these turrets you can shoot him with, but he immediately destroys them when you get in them. Thankfully, though, there's these laser guns you can also use against him, but you gotta jump in the air to get to him. And even then, you can only get a couple shots on him at a time. Thankfully, he eventually jumps down, and I was able to cheese him using chaos control. There, I can cheat too, you stupid motherfucker. Not a fan of this boss battle. There's a lot going on around you, and him shooting lasers at you constantly does not help with it. I'm gonna find a Japanese prick that made this and show him the third fucking nuke we had in store for those cunts. 
Also, there's this robot named Omega that joins you, and I, I hate his voice. J Jesus Christ, did they taste Stephen Hawking to get that voice? I don't know what that means. Find another message of attack. Just run to the end. Then you gotta fight Eggman again. Thankfully, he's back in his slot machine robot this time. There we go, motherfucker. Once again, Shadow hits Eggman with a no you, and that story path ends. Oh no, he karate chopped his dick off. Normal path? Not that bad. So far, it's actually been my favorite path, besides that little speed bump that happens near the end. But to be fair, that little speed bump's only that big of an issue, probably because I suck at this game. I'm just hoping that the rest of the game can go as smooth as this playthrough did. Also, I haven't pointed it out yet, but each path has a different song for the credits. I should probably give them a listen instead of just immediately skipping the credits when they pop up. This game has a lot going for it, but it's overall just basic structure is what kills it. Uh... Day four. The friend at work asked me, hey Evan, can you play Halo Infinite later? I'm like, can't bro, I'm still playing Shadow the Hedgehog. And he always, he's, he just said, how? Because this piece of shit game has, you gotta play it ten times, that's why. Like, there's a lot of shit in this game to do, but a lot of that shit is shit. This path is called whatever, I don't care, let's get it over with. Kill all the aliens. Defeat the tank, ship, whatever you want to call it. Run to the end of the level and collect the Chaos Emerald. A lot quicker than collecting 400 coins. That is not... Do you think if I do that to my keyboard, I'll beat the game? We're back in cyberspace again, which I'm fine with because I like the look of the world. We're playing the normal path, so all you gotta do is run to the end of the level and collect the ring. They introduce these pressure plates you have to step on and match the colors. It doesn't matter what color you pick as long as they all match up. Also, the bee's back. But he has friends. What is that? Is that a pink rhino? Oh no, that's a chameleon. Why is his voice so deep? And, uh... Stop bugging him, Tommy! Actually, I'm gonna keep an eye on you. I love this alligator. The level isn't that bad. It took me longer than it should have because I went the wrong way near the end and had to backtrack. It's definitely not as good as Digital Circuit, though. Oh yeah, then you fight Eggman. That's that that that's new, right? We haven't done that before. Shadow, don't you remember? We once raced each other here. What? This is just like old times. A race for the emerald. Actually this looks kinda neat. What? Wait, what? I'm not even touching the oh now I have to touch the buttons. In this one, I just ran to grab the Chaos Emerald, but I was getting frustrated with all the robots in my way. Fuck you! They're not even the cool kind of robots. You look like the knockoff robots you'd see in the fucking bargain bag at fucking Dollar General. Here's a bag of robot toys for three dollars, and they all look like that son of a bitch. And then your fucking dog chokes to death on it. But my sour attitude quickly went away when I got this great Chaos Control boost that got me through a good chunk of the level. You know what? If it gets me through here, I'm fine. Oh god, yeah. I bet that was a cool sliding section, but no thanks. Oh god, I'm facing the other way. Where am I going? Holy shit, I probably just saved like an ass load of time. But then I realized I had made a big mistake. Wait, what? No, I, I didn't do the good- No! The normal objective and hero objective are the exact same. This is what confuses me. It says, find the Chaos Emerald, okay. That's the neutral path, I'll use the mouse. This one here. But at the same time, it shows it for Sonic. It takes me to here. But I wanna get this level dot. No, I got- There's an emerald, there's an em- There's an emerald somewhere aboard the Ark. This is what I know. Uh, I don't know shit. <laughs> shit. I was tired by this point and was trying to piece it all together in my head when this happened. God damn it! Fuck! Son of a bitch! I overwrote my save state and I would have to start that entire path all over again. I think I had figured out what I would have to do to get to this level. I'd have to play the hero path on Mad Matrix and then do the normal path on Lost Impact. And this would get me to Cosmic Fall. But by this point, I had had enough. I knew that even if I went back and did all of that, I would still have to go back and replay every path again so that I could do all the other boss battles that I hadn't played yet. 
So I decided to take advantage of the fact that I was using an emulator and I was going to cut my struggle in half. I was going to commit the ultimate sin. But I was going to do it the next day. I was pretty tired by that point. So all my good buddies are enjoying themselves playing Grand Theft Auto V. I would love to join them and have some wacky shenanigans for the night. But I have to play Shadow the Hedgehog for the fifth goddamn day in a row now. Because I still can't beat this piece of shit. Because there's too many fucking level variations. The time for sinning had come. I was about to do the unthinkable. I was going to download a save state. This is my confession tape. I just hope that God can forgive me for committing such a terrible sin. I mean, even if he does forgive me for that, I'm going to hell. He probably knows about my anime feet pick collection. I mean, it's an interesting level. I haven't had a level- Oh, God damn it! I fucked it. I fucked it. The previously unreachable level had been reached. It only cost me a piece of myself to get. Was it worth it? You bet your ass it was worth it. One word. Vector. We've got to make it to the computer room before this place collapses. Think you can give me a hand? Of course, Alligator Man. You are now my favorite Sonic character. I don't know how I've gone existing for 22 years without knowing about the existence of this magnificent creature. He's a crocodile that's got it all. He's got bling, and he's got the jams. I wonder what he listens to. It's probably a tune so unattainable to the human ear that if you tried listening to it, your face would melt. Also, he sounds exactly like Fred Fredberger, the greatest cartoon character ever created. Judge? No, shut up! Judge? Shut up! Judge? I order you to shut up! Judge? I won't do shut up! Whoa! Anyone that sounds like Fred Fredberger is a friend of mine. The only thing that could have ruined such a perfect moment with Vector was my racist white ass kept calling him an alligator. I just hope he can forgive me. Oh yeah, the level. Yeah, it's alright. We fought through space for a bit and then just raced to the finish. Yes, there's a timer. But with Vector by my side, the time limit might as well have been infinite. God damn it, I love Vector. Having him with me made this the best level of the entire game. Black Doom then has the ovaries to show himself in the presence of a god such as Vector and challenge me in what looks to be that one room from the Jedi Temple. This room, th 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 this one. The boss battle is pretty much the same as the last time you fight him, but you have Vector with you, so this one's better by default. Don't listen to him! We need to defeat him! He's right! Now that I had accomplished my final story mission, all I had left was those boss battles I would normally have to do a whole new run to get to. But screw that, we're just gonna skip to the boss battles. Only problem is that on this save, it shows all the levels as complete. Thankfully, I drew and highlighted what levels I had left the day before. And after playing through all of them, I no longer feel bad about using that save state. All the remaining boss battles were just copy and pasted from the previous story paths. You end up fighting Black Doom for the third time. Then you have to fight Eggman for the seventh time. To top that all off, you have to do that ridiculous Sonic fight two more times. So yeah, sinning never felt so good. I actually didn't play the game that day. I got home from work, booted it up, and then immediately fell asleep at my desk again. When I woke up, I got invited to go hang out with a co-worker, and that lasted till midnight. But I looked at the title screen, so I guess that day counts. This was it. This was the day of reckoning. I was going to do it today. It had taken me a week to get to this point. I had completed all the other levels of the game, gone through all the stuff that this game had thrown at me. It was time for the last story. Oh, my bad. The last way. I've been trying to avoid talking about the story, since the game only gives you little snippets of it across the levels. But even then, there's a lot of gaps in the plot. Not to mention with different story paths giving different plot points, it all becomes a big mess. Since this is the definitive ending, now is the time to talk about the story. The entire game, Shadow's been trying to collect the Chaos Emeralds so he can remember his past. He keeps having flashbacks about some girl named Maria in some ship called the Ark. Turns out, Shadow was made by Eggman's grandfather, and Maria was his granddaughter. I guess her and Shadow were pretty close. Also, this military guy that's been on Shadow the entire game was a close friend of Maria when they were kids, and he blames her death on Shadow. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Black Doom helped create Shadow by giving him some of his DNA. But in return for this, he was promised the Chaos Emeralds. So what does he want with the Chaos Emeralds? Turns out he wants to use humans as an energy source, and he needs to get his ship on Earth to do so. So they teleport it with the Chaos Emeralds. I don't know why they needed to teleport it. It looks big enough to where it wouldn't break up in the atmosphere. I know it's a comet and it's probably made out of ice, but look, there's like, there's a lot of rock in there too. Well anyways, they get the black comet on Earth and it releases a gas that paralyzes everyone. Which I suspect is just a cover story by Black Doom to cover up the fact that he probably farted and it's so bad that it causes paralysis. 
Luckily, Shadow was able to break free from his paralysis and chase after Black Doom. Yeah, I left out a good amount of story details, but really that's the meat and potatoes of it all. Now for the level. Oh boy, it's a timed mission. You know how much I love those. So the level is pretty simple. Just rush to the end before the timer runs out. But here's the thing. There's parts of the level you can't get past unless you use chaos control. So you have to eliminate enough enemies to unlock it. An issue I ran into was being too far away from the right spot. So when I would use chaos control, it would run out right before the area I had to cross. It's not like you can save when to use it because your bar starts going down the moment you fill it up. Luckily, I was able to get it back up quickly enough to get to the end on my first go. Though I guess Black Doom got the memo that gluing fruity pebbles to your clothing isn't the peak of fashion like he thought it was and gets himself a new form. Honestly, it's not that bad looking. I like the double heads he's got going on. Also, Shadow uses the Chaos Emeralds and becomes a Dragon Ball Z knockoff. All the characters say that it's the ultimate form with no weakness. You can fly and shoot Key Blast, I mean the Chaos Spear. Yeah, that's pretty badass and all, but what sucks is that the ultimate form is a pay to win deal. You run off of rings and if they go down, you lose the form and fall to your death. I don't know the logistics of rings equaling power in the Sonic franchise, but having to constantly replenish rings just negates all the badassness of the ultimate form. It would be like if Goku went Super Saiyan against Freeze on Namek and he kept having to go to the bank every five minutes and take out a loan so the fight could keep going. I mean, I guess that would explain why it took so long for Namek to explode. Five minutes, my ass. This constant ring grabbing became an issue for me because the balloons you get rings from rotate around the level and there's so many things in the area that trying to shoot the balloons is harder than it should be since auto-aim wants to shoot everything except what you're trying to hit. Same applies to Black Shadow. Plus, you have no way to control your altitude, so if you find yourself in a high or a low spot, you are at mercy of the game to bring you back to the proper level so you can continue the fight. Not to mention the ring balloons don't respawn unless you make Black Doom teleport elsewhere, but then you have to rush over there quickly. This battle turned into a balance of self-preservation and trying to destroy this nerd. It took me a while because I kept running out of rings, but I eventually won by just stockpiling on rings before attacking. I mean, I'll take this over the other Black Doom battles. Okay, maybe not that second one because you have Vector with you. After beating Black Doom, Shadow throws his ship into this giant space nipple that I forgot to mention earlier, and it gets destroyed. The day is saved. Nixon and a military man confess their love for each other, and Shadow realizes he's too cool for this planet and goes off into space. And that is Shadow the Hedgehog. Man, I had no idea what I was getting into when I initially started this game and this review. This simple let's play became a week-long emotional roller coaster. The look of relief on my face when I finally realized it was over. But of course I forgot I was only at the halfway point because I still had to work on the video. Okay, story's over. You've seen what I went through. Now, what do I think of the game? Coming to a conclusion on this game is trickier than I thought it would be. I don't even hate this game. Really, after all the anger it brought me all the times I cursed its existence while playing, which is actually a lot by the way, I might make a compilation out of that. I really don't hate it, but at the same time, I don't like it either. It's in this weird limbo state of me having a solid opinion on it. The controls were clunky and the level design is nothing to write home about. To be honest, there really weren't even that many levels I was that big of a fan of. I mean, there were like two or three I kind of liked, but with a game with this many levels in it, that's not exactly a good thing. I found the storytelling to be weak. I think I at least mentioned somewhere that the game brings up way more questions than it answers for like a good chunk of it all. Plus, the cutscenes really didn't do that good of a job for filling in the plot holes completely. I mean, look at how I reacted when I found out that the military guy actually knew Maria. What the fuck? Wait, you're related? What? You, she was killed. Excuse me? Now I feel like I'm missing out on a lot. Not everything is negative with this game, to be honest. I'll give credit where credit is due. I appreciate the amount of effort that went into the whole spectacle of the game. The details like giving each possible story path its own name. Like, yeah, I know I brought that up, but I like little details like that. Or each ending having its own special song that plays in the credits. You can tell that the creators cared about this game while making it. I haven't even talked about the music yet. I found like most of the songs they used in the different levels to be absolute bangers. I'm not gonna praise the voice acting though. It's uh, well, it's. You humans are so pathetic. Damn you. But here's the thing, I'm not exactly gonna give it flack either. The voice acting in this game is perfect for overall what the game is. 
It's like with Silent Hill 2, where the voice acting, you could say, is not the best, but it adds to the overall experience of playing the game. Like Shadow saying damn when he falls to his death, it's just, it's just, you hear that, just... Damn, not here. Yeah, that, that's it. That's the right amount of energy for Shadow of the Hedgehog. They went and they redid the voice acting for Silent Hill 2 when they did an HD version. You can argue overall, performance-wise, the voice acting is better, but it just... It doesn't feel right. I feel like you could say the exact same thing about this game if they ever went and redid it. It's not great voice acting, but it hits the right notes. Except for Eggman. Whoever voiced Eggman brought his fucking A game, and I love him for it. What?! Honestly, though? What shocked me the most about this game was Shadow himself. I brought it up way earlier. You just take a look at- take a look at this, okay? You see this cover and you've just built this image of exactly this character just off of this cover. He's this edgy badass that doesn't take crap from anyone and he plays by his own rules. And this intro cutscene, it just hammers that in. Then the whole rest of the game just negates that image you built in your head by having Shadow try to dig into his past and get answers on why he can't remember anything, and then he's caught up in the middle of this whole alien invasion fiasco. And if we go by the ending of The Last Way, you'll see it kind of ends on a sad note for Shadow. His childhood friend is dead, he's alone up in space by himself, he found out that he's just a lab creation with the hidden purpose of enslaving humanity. Yeah, that's kind of a sad existence. I did say earlier that Shadow isn't that deep of a character, and I'll stand by that to some extent, but there's definitely more to him than that image you build in your head when you see him on the cover like that. I don't know how he's handled in other Sonic titles, but just based off this game alone, I like Shadow a lot more than I thought I would. With all that said and done, I cannot overlook the main issue I had with this game, and that is it was a chore to play. I wasn't miserable the entire time. But knowing that I'd have to go back and play it many more times to get the true ending did not put me in a happy spot. Playing a game hasn't felt this much like a chore since I played Last of Us 2. I can't see how you fix this game in a lot of those negative areas. There's this select mode that allows you to go back and replay levels you've already did in a story path. If they added the option for you to just pick a specific level you've already played, and then you can build off of that level and do a different story path you haven't done yet without having to go back all the way, that would have been a huge game changer if you ask me. Who wants to restart this every time you want to take a different story path? Unless you like the whole replayability factor of getting to go right from the beginning and do many different story paths. Yeah, I can see how that'd be a pro, but if you're not engaged by the story, like I wasn't, then it's just a giant chore and you don't see it as something with so much replayability value. You see it as a giant hindrance. Also, adding in a lock-on system would have helped a lot in those areas where you're just trying to attack an enemy or just dash attack and grab an item and then you just end up falling to your death. Also, just fix the damn camera. Seriously, just have it behind shadow at all times, or just add in an option to where you can change your camera modes. It would have been nice to have a higher variety of boss battles. When I figured out that I was going to be doing the Sonic boss battle two more times, I actually ended up skipping over that. Maybe you could have fought against other characters, I mean, they're in the game. They could have set it up to where if you were doing the dark path for a level, at the end of it, you could have fought the ally you would have had in the hero path because then you'd have conflicting interests. I'd say do the same for if you're fighting for the heroes, you end up having to fight a character on the dark path. But if the best they could give us was Black Bull, I don't want to see what other dark characters they would have had. There was care put into this game. There's just so much dragging it down. I could see why someone would say they liked this game a lot. I'm not saying it would be entirely based off of nostalgia, but I did say at some point early on in my gameplay that I would have probably loved this game when I was five. There are probably a lot of people out there who haven't played this game since they were little and have fond memories of it. See, I, on the other hand, have made the mistake of picking up games I played in my childhood and just ruining the memories I had of them. This game, however, was not one of them. I went into this with a fresh adult perspective. I say adult very lightly. I have the mental maturity of a 15-year-old. Hell, I just spent the last two weeks turning Shadow the Hedgehog into an assignment like it's some highly respectable piece of art. On a final note, Shadow the Hedgehog is kind of a mess. It's not the worst thing ever. It actually plays somewhat competently once you get into the rhythm of it, but its story structure, which does have a lot put into it, ends up being a detriment to your overall enjoyability. Unless you actually do enjoy going back and doing all the different possible paths you can, but overall I didn't see it as worthwhile to get to the final level. That save state I downloaded ended up being a huge blessing for me in the end. 
Overall, I'm glad I played this game. It gave me an insight into the whole Sonic franchise, and I'm probably actually going to play a couple more Sonic games in the future after this. Would I recommend this game? No. I feel like unless you have nostalgic ties to this game, or if you're just a fan of the franchise in general, you're not going to get much out of playing this. At least I didn't, besides a little insight into the Sonic franchise overall, but I could have gotten the same experience by watching somebody else play this game. Kind of like what you just did. You're welcome for that, by the way. I decided to wait and film my closing statement after I had finished editing the video, and at this point, it has been over a month since I started this project. Aside from that animation I made, I don't think I've really put this much effort into anything else I made in the almost 10 years I've been doing this. This was kind of special. It's all thanks to my friend Kyle from Kyle's Catalog. I didn't tell him I was doing this video. He's been working on his review for this game for over a year now, and after the month-long process it took me to get this out, I can see why, considering he doesn't have as much free time to work on this stuff as I do. I mean, I originally wasn't going to mention him in this because I didn't want to jab at him that I would gotten this out before he did. But really, this is more of a this is more of a moment of appreciation than jabbing. I don't know if I'm going to do any more videos like this anytime soon, but this was a nice breath of fresh air compared to what I normally put out. I normally don't say this, but if you like this video, uh, share it, please. I would like some street cred on being a review type channel rather than just another guy that plays video games. So if there are any groups you're in that like watching videos like this, uh, share this with them, please. If there's any other games you'd like me to tackle, tell me. You've seen I can waste my time playing games I don't care that much about, so go ahead, send those suggestions. I don't know if I'm ever going to go into this much depth on another game review because this, this review was... I think reviewing this game turned into a bigger chore than actually playing the game. But nonetheless, after all said and done, I, I think it was worth it. And now that I got it taken care of, I can finally move on to other projects. I really can't think of anything else to say besides why the hell did I think it was a good idea to wear my hair like that the entire video. In a ponytail? Really? God damn.